catch up. All right. Um, so yeah, so in here we've got um, three control nodes, uh, top of rack network switches, yeah. uh, power distribution units. In the shipping model, the power distribution units will be vertical in the back. Um, six storage nodes attached to six uh, disk enclosures. Um, one of the things we're looking at doing in a later version is moving the control or the storage nodes inside here. So we've got, we could at that point reclaim more rack space. Potentially we could put 10 of these in here if, you know, you've got a data center that could withstand that weight. Um, raised floor data centers probably not. Uh, concrete floor data centers definitely. Each node has uh, one shelf uh, yeah. of disks. Huh? Yeah. So no, no shared storage. Of no, no shared storage. Um, and then the uh, controllers basically all replicate the metadata for the objects amongst themselves. So there are SSDs in here that contain the metadata for the entire system. Okay. Um, but they're replicated across all three controllers. As you scale out, that metadata scales out three. with... Are you using Cassandra or uh, uh, something? It uses a Paxos type algorithm. So um, no Cassandra in there. Not today. Um, these guys are all designed to be serviceable without tools. So you can... Um, even the product manager can take this guy apart for service. You pull the cables out. Assuming you can get the cables out. But again, notice I don't have to have a screwdriver or any special tools for this. It's all just fingers. And I can attest to the fact that there are not very many sharp corners on these, having spent a lifetime replacing stuff inside uh, other companies' servers and cutting my fingers off. Don't know if any of you have done that, but it's not a pleasant time. So you get the cables out of the way. That whole I.O. unit pops out. And a disk shelf consists of seven of these guys, which if we had hard drives in here, okay. would have hard drives inside that all stand up right. So you replace uh, an entire one of these? Huh? If it goes bad, um, the nice thing about this infrastructure is we like to call it fail in place. So if you have a hard drive go bad in here, yeah. a lot of folks with object storage infrastructures don't replace their hard drives yeah. when they fail. Just um, until, yeah. Uh, an entire set. Yeah, we had a customer that calls it a once a month uh, disk drive Tuesday. They go through once a month and replace all the failed hard drives. Um, some of our larger customers that buy hard drives from us um, don't replace hard drives at all. Their infrastructure is large enough that by the time they get to the f where the failed hard drives are a problem, they have moved on to other parts of the infrastructure. So, or if they just repurposed it to something else and replaced the failed hard drives when they're done. Um, that's about it. It's really simple to maintain. Put it back together. The, uh, I've also been told that this bit slides on easier in our production units. So the airflow. So airflow is all front to back. Okay. Um, on the back, I don't know if you want to follow me around back. Uh, the, on, the only user serviceable bit back here are power s or fans. So basically a bunch of removable fans um, that you can pop off. Yeah. Of course, and when I say they clip on easily, I'm not going to get one off. So, yeah. So that's the only bit on the back that's uh, you even need to service. Oh. Here, has everyone seen a fan before? <laughs> <laughs> and that's really it. That's the whole rack. So what are these, sir? Don't miss that. Uh, so these are the the storage nodes. So basically, you yeah. get erasure coding here. That they send it off to be written to whatever. Um, disk node, and these guys are the brains of, of each of these guys. So true scan that thing. Yep. With the, the drive failures, do you fail, like if a, a drive goes bad, do you fail the whole drive or do you fail parts of the drive? Just or the whole drive. The whole drive. Yeah. Yeah, so if there's, you know, if there's any, any indication from the firmware or the software that the drive is going bad, it will just mark it as bad and you know, make sure those bits are somewhere else. Yeah. Or we, we can tolerate five simultaneous drive failures. But you say 2.5 million hours of the MTBF, you can see the probability of five simultaneous failures is almost close to zero. And, and the way the system is designed is that we will um, basically take three chunks of data and distribute them across all six racks so we can take
back offline for maintenance. Mm -hmm. A rack can go offline for you know emergency reasons, and you've still got two parity bits left on all of your objects. So, and again, as we expand the cluster out, that the the more parity bits you've got, and the more failures you can sustain. Mm -hmm. Um, the main reason I ask is, I know um, XIO, when we spoke to them, they failed platters within the individual drives, which I thought, oh, that's actually kind of neat. In, in the same way that you have like a scale-out storage system where one node fails, it's no big deal yeah. because of the way they write the blocks to the subparts on the platters. Right. They understand that the hardware. I just wondered, because you guys are all the way down to the, the hard yeah. drive. We, we don't do that today. Don't do that today. Right? So it's a capability built does exist eventually where we can just if a head fails, only that platter alone is the one that fails. Mm -hmm. But that's more like a roadmap. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But currently, if you compare it to a typical way, say the reboot time is maybe weeks, yep. at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. On a 8 terabyte drives now, you should not be using it. And since the protection is the object level, um, when a disk should fail, all the objects and other fragments in there, we can write to any number of different drives. We don't need to exactly recreate the failure. Actually, that's true, yeah, because, uh, because of your own main objects and all that, reduces the need to have some sort of spell out some of the right. don't need that rigid kind of domain. Right, so basically for any object, you've got, you've got data on 18 drives in here. So if a drive fails, you've got 588 minus 18 possible drives to recreate those bits somewhere else. Yeah. So it's actually really fast. Yeah. Um, and that's just in one rack. So if, again, you scale out to multiple racks, it becomes even more, it comes even faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to think of handling these failures more about plan, maintenance event, not as an incident event. Right. Yeah. So you simply want every quarter, somebody comes in there, the management tool states which one of the drives need replacement, you just simply replace it. No data loss, no data availability loss. And that's right. one of the changes in thinking to get away from the whole idea like, yeah, we got HA and if it's a solo, we yes. can do this. This is one of those education things, because when I was talking to people at the health management show, the guy's like, well, but I'm going to want to replace my failed hard drives, because that's what I do. Like, you don't have to. But <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a mindset that we've all got. to get someone in to replace that drive. Yeah, that yeah exactly. And the management of things at scale is fundamentally different. Yep. When you're going to do All right, what did I miss there? There we go. And that's it, that's the major serviceability of the system.